Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be going through my entire perfume tray slash display and I'm going to talk to you about all of my fragrances. It's been quite a while since I've done a fragrance collection video, quite a few years actually. So you'll see in some ways it's actually shrunk a little bit. It's become a little bit more curated. I've only kept the things that I love and actually use and I'm really excited to share them with you. We're going to start with the perfumes that I have been wearing all summer long. So there's actually two because I've been layering them and I have to say this combination is amazing I'm so so pleased with it so my fragrance from summer last year was Tom Ford Soleil Blanc I wore it every single day this is a really special perfume um, it's a very unusual combination I've had it for two seasons I think it's a wonderful one to wear during the day in the summer because it's not too heavy-handed. The official description of it is cardamom, bergamot, pistachio, amber, and coconut milk. This is one that I would agree with, but I would say that the coconut milk is what stands out the most. So that is what you smell first. Overall though, I think the best, most accurate way to describe it for you so that you can kind of imagine what it smells like is to say that it smells like a very expensive sunscreen. So a kind of coconutty sunscreen screen smell but like so much more luxurious like that on a yacht or something like that it really smells wonderful it is very very summery though as is this one so this is mandarino di amalfi this one is unsurprisingly very citrusy um, also from tom ford and this one is described as being tarragon mint basil currant grapefruit jasmine pepper and orange blossom so this is wine where soleil blanc i would say pretty much did agree with the description just um i think the coconut stands out more rather than being a, a base note i can smell it right away for mandarino di amalfi i don't smell that much of an herbaceousness to it you know they say there's mint and basil and tarragon yes like there is some green kind of to it to kind of um not make it su such a basic citrus scent but i think it's very very citrusy with strong notes really nicely done of white flower like orange blossom and jasmine and i can definitely smell a little bit of like that kind of citrus rind kind of bitterness um as well as a nice kind of peppery woodsy note underlying everything else and giving it a little bit more body I think these two complement each other wonderfully. What I'll sometimes do is wear Soleil Blanc to the office because it's a little bit softer and then I'll add Mandarino di Amalfi in the evening or I'll wear both throughout the day. They're both gentle enough that I can get away with them um, worn all day long lightly spritzed. My new fall scent, which I'll mention to you now because new stuff is exciting, um, is also from Tom Ford. And I know these fragrances are very expensive, but I would say that my experience of Tom Ford has been that they um, really hold well on my skin. And if you find that you sometimes have issues where perfume just disappears on you, um, I think Tom Ford and um, YSL and Chanel all make perfumes that really kind of stick to your skin and your hair and your clothes and just last all day long and fade really beautifully. So let me tell you a little bit about my new fragrance. This is Vanille Fatale. It's still in the box and it's in the classic packaging rather than um, the summery packaging. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. So I will not probably be pulling this out until the weather kind of cools down a little bit. I'm thinking early September is when I'll start wearing this. It's a very sexy fragrance. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm very excited that Tom Ford has come out with something classy vanilla because I'm not actually a vanilla person. I hate the idea of smelling like a cupcake. I also really don't like the tobacco vanille um, that they have kind of been quite famous for. I know a lot of people do really like that fragrance, but I don't like tobacco notes, so it was never going to be a hit um, with me. This one is very, very different from that. So if you didn't like that one, maybe you will like this one. I have to read you the description because it's just too good to skip. So here's what um, the press release says. It's from 2017, so it's a fairly recent release. It says, a beguiling a tempest that takes over like a rush of blood to the head. The impossible becomes real. Too good to be true true becomes true. Um, so I'll tell you about some of the notes um, because that really doesn't tell you at all um, what it smells like. So the, in this there are notes of saffron, coriander, incense, coffee, roasted barley, and frangipani. And this is one again that I do agree with. I don't smell the coriander though. 
um, the incense I would say is very soft it's done with a light hand and I do definitely smell the coffee and this kind of roasted scent it doesn't smell like a coffee house or anything like that but I would agree with that 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 is something that you kind of get that dry down I also would say I smell some sandalwood it's got a woodsiness to it and the saffron gives it a beautiful savory note as you continue watching this video you will figure out I am having a love affair with smelling like a delicious paella. I don't know what it is. I love saffron notes and cardamom notes in um, fragrances. I think they give a beautiful, sexy savoriness um, to fragrance, and I definitely gravitate even unknowingly um, to um, fragrances that have those notes. And the vanilla in this scent is done so well. It is not desserty at all. It is a little bit sweet, but that sweetness dries down and kind of becomes part of your skin. And I can definitely speak about this fragrance with some knowledge because I got one of those really nice jumbo size samples from the Tom Ford counter. They are kind enough to make those up for you um, while you think about spending the dollars on these bottles, um, which really makes a huge difference because I would say I wasn't sure if it would be too vanilla-y for me, but it's not. It's really lovely. This is my scent from last year's fall, which I wore on repeat. You wouldn't think so, given that there's still so much left in the bottle, but Byredo are big bottles, so it's an investment. Make sure you like it. Get a sample. Um, this is Black Saffron. No surprise, I gravitated towards this one, too. It's a spicy oriental. Um, but it has some really nice citrusy notes to it that make it a little bit lighter and more, um, I don't know how I would put it, like it's a little bit less sexy than the Vanille Fatale. Um, it's got grapefruit, um, it's got violet and leather according to the, the description. I would say I agree with that. I definitely, I smell a lot of spiciness in this, like even a little bit of like a cinnamoniness. A lot of woodsiness as well. Again, like I would say there's a kind of like nice antique shop kind of background to it with a nice spiciness from the saffron as well. I guess fall 2016? Is this really that old? Maybe it is. Um, a book by Commodity, one of my favorite fragrance lines. I absolutely love this perfume. So actually I was surprised when I was making some notes for this video that this is apparently marketed to men. But I don't think it's, I mean, you could wear it as a guy, I'm not saying you can't, um, but I'm saying that I don't think that it has like an overly mannish sort of scent to it. Um, what I think of this is that it is a beautifully balanced, very crisp fall scent. And the reason for that is that the top note that you smell first, and this is from the description and from my opinion, is cucumber. Um, and then after that it says bergamot, eucalyptus, amber, and sandalwood. I don't smell any eucalyptus. I have to say I don't love the smell of eucalyptus, so I probably wouldn't love it that much if it was very strong. I do smell the amber, for sure. And then what I smell from this is a combination of leather and paper. And why I've always loved this scent so much and talked so much about it on my channel, so I'll try and keep this part brief. Um, this smells like afternoon tea in a beautiful old library to me. It definitely has that antique book smell. If you like antique bookshops, you need to get this because um, that combined with like a nice cucumber sandwich is what it smells like to me. I know that sounds weird, but it's amazing. One of my all-time favorite scents. This is Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel. This is the scent that I wore, I would say, pretty much all the time when I started working. It felt very grown-up and ladylike to me at the time. I think it's a beautiful, luxurious scent that's not too overpowering. It's very classic, very ladylike. It goes well with pearls. It's that sort of scent, um, and it's a beautiful take on white flowers. I'm very, very picky about the floral scents that I like. I don't like them to be too powdery. Um, so I'll give you the official description for this one. So it's categorized as an oriental floral. It's got orange, orange blossom, mimosa, jasmine, and rose. I would agree with all of that, but I would say it's nicely balanced as well. It's got a nice sort of almost muskiness as a base that you get from the dry down, in my opinion, on my skin. Really do think of this as jasmine and orange blossom done well. So it's not you know, overly flowery, it dries down so that there's no powderiness as well. 
it's just really clean. One thing that I do love to do is to layer scents. So I'm going to tell you about two scents that I like to layer with others that I'm going to mention in this video. The first is Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay. And what this fragrance does is to add just a nice herbaceous fruitiness to any other scent. So if I feel like I've already sprayed myself with like, let's say Coco Mademoiselle or black saffron or something in the morning, and you never want to overdo it. So you can respray a little bit of what you wore in the morning, or you can switch it up a little bit. So what I'll do if I still want to smell a bit more like just refreshed is to do a little Jo Malone because these scents are quite light on my skin. This does not last all day. So Blackberry and Bay is kind of just a nice compliment to all of the other perfumes that I like and I can sort of spray it quite liberally and it's quite light. Um, so I do really like this scent. I think it's a nicely balanced fruity scent. If you want something that is, you know, fruit forward but not going to be like pie, I think Blackberry and Bay is a really nice choice. And then another choice that I probably would not wear all day is Tom Ford Velvet Orchid. I was definitely in a phase where I liked more heavy-handed kind of scents. I think this scent is a nice um, alternative to Poison. It's really got a nice sweetness to it, so it's not overly kind of woodsy spicy because it's got that orchid. I would say also a little bit of iris and quite a lot of rose as well, like a sweet rose. Um, it's very sexy. This is definitely something that I would prioritize wearing at night. I probably would not wear this to work, um, but it's definitely a sexy scent and it's a nice scent as well to pump up any other scent that I might be wearing during the day and I just kind of want to give it more of a sultry twist. Then the scent that does last on my skin from Jo Malone, so you may want to look at these intense um, Colonia Dance line because um, they do last on the skin much better than just the regular clear bottles from Jo Malone. So this is such a saffron forward smell. Of course it is called saffron, so no surprise. And this one has notes of pepper, sandalwood, and amber. So it's definitely got a bit more of a woodsiness, I would say, than black saffron has. Um, they're... here, I'll compare them. I think the difference is black saffron has that citrusiness to it. Um... It's a little bit more complex, whereas this one, of course, is more of just a plain saffron scent. Not available anymore, so you'd have to purchase it from a resale site or eBay or something like that. Um, for me, it's really just notable because I had never smelled a saffron perfume. I didn't know that those fragrances really existed. It wasn't a note in any of the fragrances I had previously tried before buying this a few years ago, and it really started something for me, so I will always keep it for that reason, and because it is kind of like not very complex, it's very saffron dominant, if I want to add you know, a little bit of like that spicy saffron scent that I love, I could do a combination like this. For whatever reason, you've smelled Coco Mademoiselle and you like the idea of it, but it doesn't re really quite float your boat, definitely consider the Misty or Blooming Bouquet. I think this one is still available or possible to find. Um, I do like it better than the original Mistior. I think this is a really nice young floral scent. It has more of like a peony kind of smell than um, Coca Mademoiselle, which is more jasmine dominant. Um, so it's really nicely balanced. It's got a citrusiness to it, like a sweet mandarin and white musk as well, according to the description. I wouldn't say that it's very musky or very woodsy either, but it's still nicely balanced. It's not overly flowery, powdery, or anything like that. When I was doing my research, I was absolutely shocked that this YSL release, this is Parisienne, is from 2009. So I've had this fragrance for so long, and I would say this is a testament to the fact that if you try and keep your perfumes out of direct sunlight and in the shade if possible, it's not always a perfect science because I definitely like to have mine on display. Um, they will last for a long time for you. So this is from 2009. It still smells exactly the way it did when I bought it. Um, so it has notes of rose, violet, cranberry, vetiver, musk, sandalwood. And interestingly, this is what I think um, makes this one really special and why I still love it. It actually was intended to smell a little bit like makeup. You know that plasticky kind of old makeup smell? 
because I know that from my research, I can now smell it. I would not say it's something that would be, you know, dominant. It sounds kind of bad when you think of it that way, that it was, you know, intended to have that plasticiness, but it makes it really unique. Um, it really doesn't smell like anything else I've ever smelled. I normally don't love violet. I hate violet, violet liqueur, anything that smells like those really powdery rose and violet scents. And this is not like that. I think it's got a berry kind of note to it and a woodsiness along with that makeup penis somehow that really works well. I do love the smell of cranberries so perhaps that's more present than I've ever realized. This is Guerlain Robe Noir, little black dress. This one is very very berry forward so whereas the YSL has you know a hint of berry to it that cranberry kind of smell. This one is actually dominant cherry smell. Sounds horrible. I actually hate cherry candy or anything cherry scented normally but it's a really nice black cherry smell it's got red berries various red berries to it the description says it also has almond rose um, iris and vanilla and I have to say I agree with that I don't think it's very rose forward I can smell the vanilla and the red berries most strongly and again to me it has a wood woody sort of base I think I gravitate towards scents that have that very, very good. And I can smell the almond too. I love marzipan, so I would say that that's probably something that, you know, I, I don't recognize myself smelling, but it's one of the reasons that I like it. A very unique fragrance. I'm not sure if this is still available, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere. This is Aqua 330 from um, Pucci. It's got the beautiful Pucci print on the lid. I don't wear this very often anymore, but it is a beautiful fragrance. It's very different from anything else. I would say it's most similar to um, Book by Commodity, but it's a summer version of it because it's got that cucumber scent mixed with watermelon. It's very oceanic. If you've ever smelled Aqua di Gio, which I used to love and I might buy a bottle again someday, um, it's got that kind of um, sea salt kind of green smell to it. Finally, I kind of hesitated to mention this, but I know that um, not fragrance friendly offices are becoming more frequent work environments where you're technically not supposed to wear fragrance. I'm very liberal with the fragrances I wear to work because I work in a very small office and I have a private office that is large. So even if I want to douse myself, nobody's going to suffer too badly from that and I don't work with anybody who has a perfume allergy. Um, however, sometimes you just don't really want to smell like much you just want to smell good um so combination of my um dove cucumber deodorant and this smells really really good so this is nux huile prodigieuse it's not a fragrance it's actually body oil but it's a dry body oil it gives a really nice sheen to your legs a very very nice product you know as a beauty product fragrance aside but that said i am not sure exactly what this is meant to smell like there's no official fragrance description for it, but it smells very, very good. It smells kind of nutty and just like, it just smells good. It smells warm. It has a warm smell to it, which is something I definitely gravitate towards. Um, I am excited to buy a new bottle of this. You can see this is pretty much empty and layer this with a light-handed amount of the Vani Fatale fragrance. Um, I think these two just would go beautifully together, like really, really nice kind of yeah, they will, will complement each other really wonderfully. So this is what I'll be wearing come fall once the skin gets dry. Um, I think that'll be what I will be wearing on repeat. So I thought I would give you guys a little bit of a preview as well, of course, as an update on what I've been wearing and loving all summer and everything that I like to switch those fragrances up with. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, collection video. Please let me know your favorite fragrances down below. Maybe let me know like your favorite fragrance of all time. I would love to know what your signature scent is. I think it's so personal. I love getting to know you guys and it's definitely something that I don't know I think is interesting to know about people so please leave that in the comments um, down below if you'd like to see my next installment on style then make sure you give this video a like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video